All right. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unity Sharks Podcast. This is Mako Shark hosting this week, joined by my co-hosts, Lemon Shark and Hammer Shark. Hello. Hey there. <laughs> so, so uh, not for what? Yeah. So before we get into things, we'll talk about the meet of the week. I'm going to be the tiebreaker. On. A lot of decision, a lot of thinking. Uh, I've decided I'm probably going to give it to the Star Phil one because it's actually a really good format. <laughs> so, and it's something <laughs> where, like something where Doctor Phil ends up meeting this other guy who looks like he shaved his head and looked exactly like him. <laughs> He's just got this really done-looking expression. Like, you can't believe this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> so it says something like, uh, I don't know, uh, when you bring your own snacks to the party and someone brought the same exact one. Something like that. So it's that style of joke. Yeah, yeah, and the actual meme, well, actually, not the meme, I'm sorry. Um, I believe in that episode, he kind of kicks off the guy. Does he? Uh, that, that's why at least is read the comments, but that'd be super hilarious. <laughs> if he just, he's like, no, no, I'll deal with this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm done. I'm too tired. <laughs> you're fat. Him, you're yeah. disgusting. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how aware Dr. Phil is of the meme following he has. Well, I feel like it's died down. Really? Well, he, he did do a meme review with PewDiePie that one time. Yeah, but that was a, a while ago. Here, let me, let me look it up. Yeah, that was a couple years ago, wasn't it? We were just barely roommates then, weren't we? Oh, yeah. Back when that the meme w- review was still a thing. Yeah, that was a year ago. Really? Oh, all right. In 2020 or 2019? Okay, it was more than a year ago. It's going to be two years in August. Okay. Yeah. And then... Oh, Elon actually did it before. Uh, Before Dr. Phil did. Interesting. Oh yeah, a uh, quick, I guess, joke. Um, so you know how they always say that Mark Zuckerberg looks like a lizard, or he is a lizard. Yeah, yeah. So I saw I just saw this newspaper, and it was talking about Bezos going to space and Elon Musk is going to space. But then I thought I was like, why isn't Zuckerberg going to space? You know, he's one of the top three that well-known billionaires that own these corporations or these pages, why doesn't he go to space? Because he came from space. He came (laughs) from space. (laughs) He's already been there. (laughs) Yeah, why would you go back to some place that you're already from? I mean, other than visit, but he likes it here. So that's just... Uh, They're always thinking he was was from under the earth. Oh, yeah. Who knows? He won't tell us that. Yeah, no matter how many times I'm on trial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this so awkward? He's just an <laughs> awkward person, that's all. Yeah. I love the one where he's like, he's, he's like giving a motivational speech and he's talking about how I was human, but I am human. I still have human. <laughs> he's like, you look at motivational speech, he's talking about how he's human and how like we all make mistakes, like I'm human too. And basically, said, instead of saying I am human too, he says I was a human once. I was human. That poor guy. Yeah. And then and then there's just the picture that came out when he was <laughs> waveboarding. All right, calm down. I love it. Uh, but you remember that when the picture when he was waveboarding or wave surfing, I mean, and he just has a ton of sunblock on his face. And so it's, it's, it's like just his face is white, but the rest of him's like tanner. <laughs> so bad. Uh, poor guy. I don't know. Oh, he's a billionaire, so he can't really complain. 
Yeah. Those lizards have all those little like uh like infrared gland sensor things in their face, so he's trying to keep him safe. Oh yeah. Trying to make sure yeah, they yeah. stay good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <sighs> oh, we had a few topics today. Um a lot of it's actually gonna be about the Olympics. So which I'm really excited about because I love the Olympics. It's one of my favorite things. So uh let's see. I think Lemon had a not Lemon, Hammer had a <laughs> topic for us that he wanted to bring up. Yeah. So you haven't been watching the Olympics, Lemon, because I guess you're trying to figure out channels and all that. But uh one of the more well known female Olympians, um Oh gosh, I was just saying her name earlier. I think it's Simone. Simone Biles, yeah. Yeah, Simone Biles. Uh, she's a really good gymnast. Oh yeah. And this year, though, or this Olympics, I guess she was trying to do like warm ups and everything, and she just wasn't catching herself. She was kind of stumbling and falling, and she decided to pull out of the Olympics. When oh, really? she got there. Yeah, at least two of the events. Yeah, her single events and the team event. Yeah. Um, and uh-huh. Well, and, uh huh. She's trying to figure out if she's going to be in, they call them the artisanal events or something like that next week. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it was just like yesterday morning that she decided to step out on the other one. But mm. she did soon enough that there was another teammate that took in it took her place. Um I mean she she explained it that mentally it just wasn't clicking and she doesn't feel good enough to do it. <laughs> so kind of just some mental issues issues. Mm -hmm. Um and it'll be, I I agree with her. You know, if she doesn't feel mentally prepared, she shouldn't do it. She might mess up, and she could potentially hurt herself and just ruin her career for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. um, at the worst case. But I I do want to hear you guys' opinions because I was thinking about it because I didn't. This was just for the team event, so three of the four girls were able to compete and they got silver. You know, congratulations to them and everything. Yeah. Um, but I was just thinking, it was like, I I'm glad that she decided to not do it for her own safety and that she's not potentially gotten hurt because of it. But um, I kind of feel bad for the other potential, you know, silver medalists, you know, or gold medalists. You know, like, if she realized sooner. Maybe there could have been a chance for someone else to act to have been a winning Olympian, and her decision kind of last minute didn't allow another person to do it, um, which is kind of a mean thought process. But it was just kind of came to me. I was like, I'm glad that she didn't get injured, but do you, do you think it would have been better if she? was able to figure that out sooner and I've let another athlete take her place earlier instead of you know in the middle or right before the event started. Mm. It's kind of a tough tough um, situation because I'm not that person I'm not in her shoes or whatnot but exactly it's definitely yeah. you know everyone's seen it and it's have that burden on her shoulders, you know, you can't just do everything. Yeah. But sometimes you kinda of have to go through with things even if you don't feel comfortable doing it, you know? Like you signed up for something and like you spent so much money on it and like you've come out this far. It's like I don't know, it's kind of I feel like you have to have kind of go through with it. Like you fly all the way to Japan, halfway through the world to Japan and like all of a sudden you're like, oh I don't feel like doing it, you know? Like People all the time in life we have to do stuff we're not comfortable with, you know? 
like just out of like necessity and like need to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, though, it's like if she's not feeling it, then I can't really judge her either, you know, because I'm not in that position and she might not want to hurt herself and all that, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I, I guess to put it in his per- perspective, uh, and it, and then I'll, I'll pass it over to you, Mako. Um, uh, there's a male gymnast. He had his ACL or his Achilles torn, uh, Oof. and he had surgery three months ago, and. He was saying in his interviews that three weeks ago he wasn't able to walk. And honestly, it, if anyone here has torn that or had that type of surgery, you need six months. Um, but he just decided to go to the Olympics in three. <laughs> he, oh, wow. you know, he could have torn it again and not been able to do gymnastics for the rest of his life. So a kind of similar situation was more one was physical but the other one is mental i don't know maybe it could be physical as well yeah what a boss yeah he actually got gold i think or his team well his <laughs> team got gold and their <laughs> in their situation you know uh, so, so i guess it's kind of comparing a little bit you know someone that physically would not have been able to compete again but someone that potentially could have because of her uh, situation as well. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you think, Mako? For me, I was actually kind of thinking about it because when you're an athlete, I think one of the biggest things you have to figure out is how to focus, like how to be at your best. Like as long as you're doing the training routines and you're, you know, uh, practicing your form, technique, whatever it is. Then you know you develop the physique and the muscle memory, whatever else you need to do it physically. So then, that last hurdle, and you know maybe the biggest one is just mental. It's that focus. It's being able to say yes, I can do this. And you know, for a lot of professional athletes, they kind of figure that out. You know, they figure out how to stay focused. Some of them have rituals or whatever. So. Um, the thing is with Simone Biles, she has a lot of extra pressure because she's kind of the darling of the American U- the USA team right now. Yes, she is. You know, she got really famous after the Rio Olympics because she's really talented. And, you know, in interviews, she's really likable. So, and, you know, she's <laughs> part of a long line of you know, very talented, very likable, very just great Olympian gymnast, uh, Olympian gymnasts. And I think that might be what's weighing on her. I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot of interviews going on with her. I don't know if she's talked about it in depth. Like all I've read is that she's taking a, well, he's trying to figure out her mental health right now. So I feel like on top of being the pressure of being an athlete and an Olympian, no less, she's also having to deal with the pressure of all these eyes being on her, you know, not just in the U S cause we're all like, yeah, go win gold medals for us, Simone. But you know, all around the world, cause other people are going to think she's cool or at least a potential rival. So I, I can't entirely blame her if she's struggling. I can't blame her at all. Really. If she's struggling. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's like, and at the end of the day, even though she represents the country and she has a team, there is a point where she has to take care of herself individually. And like I said, if she's going to go out there and hurt herself or go out there and perform so badly that it's almost humiliating for her team, herself, and her country, then yeah, maybe she should consider withdrawing from it. Yeah. I mean, I hope she. I hope she does well. Um, I'm wondering. I will say this too. Oh yeah, go ahead. I will say this too. I just take. I just respect for her for saying that because it would be hard to like 
get that fire and also back down because I knew you're also like worried about um, uh, pleasing other people or like what other people think, but she's willing to like do what she felt like she needed to do for herself too. So I, feel, I do respect her for being able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like, um, since we were talking about should she have figured this out earlier in the year, it might have been one of those things where, you know, you don't entirely realize how like impacted you are until you're right there in the thick of it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That 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 thought came to me as well. You know, it, it easily could have been like she steps on the bus and she's like, "Oh crap," you know. Yeah, yeah. Like she may have been going through training camp and everything, going like, "Okay, I'm a little ner, I'm more nervous, but it's okay. I'll get through it." And then she's there and she's like, "Crap, I'm like, my mentality and emotions are more out of whack than I thought they would be." And you know, that's when it's like, "Well, shoot, what do I do now?" Yeah, we it just don't know. There's not, not enough information, of course. But I mean, we're not in her shoes. We can't necessarily judge it. Just it was just more just of an outsider's perspective. That kind of just came to me. I thought it interesting to talk about. But yeah, no, it is. And like, <laughs> I think we all hope that she'll get better. Of course, you know. And even if she decides to withdraw from like the next set of gymnastic events, then yeah, I, I think most of, most of the U S would support her in that. Yeah. I mean, she is 24, so she could possibly do one, but, yeah. um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Yeah. So I guess that is kind of the nice thing. Like her popularity isn't just sort of a superficial, <laughs> Oh, you win gold medals for us. So we like you. It's more like we actually think you're a great athlete and we support you. So I think she'll still have that whatever decision she makes. Yeah. So. But congrats to the team nonetheless for getting silver. That's really impressive. Oh, yeah. I'm not flexible at all. I never <laughs> will probably be able to do gymnastics. So. Mm-hmm. Gymnastics is one of those things I think it looks really fun, but then the amount of actual effort and training it takes to get through it, I'm like, uh, I don't think I have time or money for that. Yeah, like you really have to start young. We're just not young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was just skeet shooting archery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally would do archery. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, like, uh, Badminton, maybe badminton's way more intense than I thought it was going to be. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just expecting it to be kind of like our games, where it's like puck, puck, puck every few minutes. No, they're like running around the court, like bang, 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 back and forth. And I was like, this is exciting. I want to watch this. Yeah, I would totally do badminton. That'd be so much fun. But I don't know, uh, Lemon. What do you think? Uh, should we try to push shark diving into one of the Olympics? Shark, shark wrestling. <laughs> shark yeah, wrestling. shark wrestling, yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? Give some representation to the sharks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the, the host for that, for the world. <laughs> yeah. Then they hold the games in, then they hold the games in Russia, and they're like, since we're landlocked, we decided to do bear wrestling instead. <laughs> No goodness. Same concept. <laughs> Less water. Yeah. There we go. More dry. We come to call her. We come to call her out. We're like, oh, you see that bison over there? <laughs> Should have grabbed by the horns. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, those things are huge. All right. Well, that that was that was all I wanted to talk about. All right. So my topic was also Olympics related, like I mentioned. Um, it's a little more lighthearted, just kind of a goofy would you thing. But uh, so like I mentioned, I love the Olympics. It's probably my second favorite thing ever next to Star Wars. So like if I could take two weeks off to just watch the Olympics, I'd probably do it. But I was thinking <laughs> if you could host your own Olympics... And there's like a whole another discussion we could have about that because there's a lot of controversy about hosting it nowadays. But if you could host your own unlimited budget anywhere you want, any number of sports, and they don't even have to be 
real sports. They can be fictional ones, any fictional location as well. What would you do? Well, that's kind of a very elaborate question. <laughs> um, I really want to bring back the stump throwing that you see in Brave. I mean, that's from the the Scott the Scottish games. Oh, but, the caber toss. Yeah, I believe that was in the Olympics for a little while. Was it? Yeah. Uh, I think when it was fifties, uh, black and white times, before the world had color. Um, <laughs> I mean, we could look it up. Maybe it never was, but I would love to include that. I think it'd be really fun. But, oh, uh, pod racing, I guess. Oh, yeah. okay, that would be fun. <laughs> World combat. Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> the the Olympics, it is the Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, just bring back the the Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> just tell the Olympians, oh yeah, that's your that's your competitor, and just Shao Kahn walks out on a giant hammer. <laughs> oh. oh goodness. Yeah, this is about... not though. I got. Oh no, I was gonna say since a Mortal Kombat, like just throw in street fighting. Oh, there we go. That'd be yeah, yeah, in general, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can be, you don't mean in a venue. You're going to be walking across the street trying to find them. <laughs> oh, dear. Hunt them down through the city. <laughs> That'd be pretty interesting, actually. There's probably stuff out there like that, but oh, yeah. no, when you, the first thing you, when you said, um, Fictional sports too. The first thing that popped in my head is Quidditch. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I'm not really that I'm not really that huge of a fan of Harry Potter anymore as much, but like my cousin actually tore ACL playing Quidditch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, of all the people in our family, if, of all the people I know to tear their ACL playing Quidditch, it had to be you, of course. Because <laughs> 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 she is just really into Harry Potter. But that'd be kinda interesting seeing people try to do that on a professional level. Oh, I know, right? Imagine foosball. foosball. What's, what's it? Foosball. Oh, foosball. <laughs> foosball. Oh, what's, I can't remember foosball. What is that again? That's like the soccer uh, board. For like soccer oh, board. yes. Yes, yes. That'd be really fun. Yeah. I mean, they have table tennis. Just put oh, it in here. Hockey. Oh, okay. um, I was thinking drag racing. Oh, uh, specifically kind of like the Tokyo one because we're in we're in Tokyo right now, but you know like the initial D initial type D. racing. Oh, yeah. oh, initial D. Yeah, the anime uh, where they're uh, is it just drag racing? That's just drag racing, right? I've never watched it, so I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's I don't know it so they're basically it's just a racing anime. And they just take sharp turns and they use the brakes and everything to kind of... Oh, yeah, drifting? Drifting, thank you. Uh, so that included, I think, drifting, drift races uh, and drag races and everything. Those would probably be fun to be added. Yeah. Uh, for myself... Uh, let's see. I think I'd host the games on Mustafar, the lava planet from Star Wars. That would be pretty fun. We could have lava surfing. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh so you didn't mean anywhere. You didn't mean anywhere we can do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, could, they could do lightsaber dueling. That would be fun. Actual, like, training sabers or something. Yeah, but how are they, you know, because in fencing, they touch each other on a sensor or something, and they get points. How do you do that with lightsabers? Oh, so this is a bit of... Star Wars lore or whatever you want to call it but yeah they actually have like training sabers or instead of just stabbing you it gives you a little stun thing like just gives you a buzz like a taser so kind of like a stun baton yeah exactly but less painful like it hurts no. but you don't die from it it doesn't chop you in half yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's see and then Maybe magic dueling from Harry Potter. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, oh, but also Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's <laughs> <laughs> just add Pokemon battles, you know? 
You pulled a blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> it's all over. Peter's probably upset about that. Yeah, this make this makes him how a Pikachu defend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Peter oh, would so... be happy about that. Oh yeah, Peter. <laughs> well, we we put Peter in the middle of it. They would have to fight him. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Super Smash Brothers, but in real life. Um, mm. you know what? You know what'd be kind of fun. Um, what? skydiving, but you know, kind of start from space. Oh, how would you like compete against that? Like, would it be a better skydiver or not? Uh, you, you know, you you do aerial tricks. Oh, and. <laughs> Kind of like diving, I guess. Okay, um, I guess we can see that. Yeah, the the type of landing that they do, any effects that they do, you know. And I, th- I think there are actual skydiving competitions where the goal, like, dr- they draw a giant target on the ground, and the goal is to try and, like, land in the bullseye. Yeah. Yeah. You know, add some archery to it. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in some cannons. I always thought it would be fun, well, like in stream skydiving, where they give you an instrument and you jump out of the plane and you have to play the song together, and your parachutes don't unlock until you finish the song. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! <laughs> it was like a music video idea I had, but I think that'd be fun to do. <laughs> Terrifying, they, I, I mean. Yeah, they could do yeah. music composition. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know. I feel like music is kind of a very objective theme. That's true. We're going to get people to do it all the time, though. Yeah. That's guitar like guitar riffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess on a more, uh, as a more serious one, I'd love it if they'd add parkour. Oh. Because I've yeah, seen some really cool parkour, parkour competitions. Yeah. 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 Our roommate could do it. I mean, because there is the Ninja Warrior. Yeah, there's that. Could... And... Uh huh. Well, like I did actually, I actually did watch a parkour uh, tournament one time. So and do a little to uh, expect, but then there was also another where they made the longest parkour course in the world. I think it was on a mountain in China. So it was like a mile long, and just watching them go down that was incredible. Oh, wait, wait. Is that the one that's like a mountain? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just going yeah. down the side of a mountain. I think they said it's normally some... Uh, I think it's normally some kind of BMX track, but they converted it for that. So, and then... <clears throat> almost... Oh, MMA, I think, would be interesting. Mixed martial arts? Yeah, because they have boxing, they have judo, they have taekwondo, they have Greco-Roman wrestling, so they have fencing, like, I think MMA would be a natural addition. Yeah. I mean, they could add speedrunners. Yeah, video games. Oh, yeah, video yeah, games. Speed about... yeah. <laughs> Who can beat Super Mario Brothers the fastest? Yeah, just add esports to it, you know? Yeah. It's already big enough. It's across multiple countries. It, I think they have enough countries to actually participate. Yeah, they actually do. So, and there was a. Uh... Oh, yeah, we talked about shark wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't there some kind of like pig wrestling thing where you have to catch a greased pig? Um, I think that's kind of rodeo. Oh, well, close enough. Yeah, yeah I think let's see. the rodeo. <laughs> yeah, I'll add radios. Go oh, rodeos to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, rap battles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> That'd be really fun, actually. I'd watch that. <laughs> Beat eating, maybe. Beat eating? Yeah. Beat dating? Is that what you said, Mako? I I don't know. I I don't see speed dating working because you yeah. can easily kind of pay off the person. <laughs> yeah, that's well, true. I said speed eating is what I meant. 
Oh, speed oh, dating. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, speed dating? Huh. <laughs> you madman. They could do flower arrangements. <laughs> flower arrangements. Uh, uh, what else? How about you, Lemon? Are you thinking of anything? Hmm. Nappy much said what I thought I was going to think of doing. What about napping? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Who can fall asleep? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Who can chill? Who could be the most chill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I just thought... Um... Since we since we watched Predator last year, like, oh goodness, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm like, who would the target be? The previous winners, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I could bring back the old gladiators. Uh, professional hide and seek. Professional hide and seek. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I got one. I got one. Uh, this is from Legend of Korra, but the. Uh, the oh. four team fights of all the elements. Yeah, that bending tournament thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be really cool to watch. Like, even the normal fighting tournament when they first meet Toph, that would be cool. Yeah. Mm, that would be pretty dope. Ice sculpting during the Summer Olympics. Okay. <laughs> 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 who, can, okay. who can sculpt the best one while it's melting? <laughs> Professional burgling. Oh yeah, yeah. They they <laughs> set up. That would actually be really cool. Yeah, like how fast can you run this house? Yeah, no, 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 no. They definitely could. You know, they give the team like a full setup of night vision goggles and everything, and they kind of have a little bit information of the layout. But you know, they set up traps and guards and everything, and they have to get you know either the furthest. Or how well they do it, their creativity, how they use their limited tools, or even do they even get to the goal? Yeah, and there's like a, it's like a person in the house who's like looking for them. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun, actually. Laser tech. Con- <laughs> Laser tech, paintball. Oh, paintball would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I thought yeah. of sumo wrestling. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought of sumo wrestling and American football, but I think those just like they're only popular in their home countries. Yeah, and it would be. I feel like it'd be kind of hard to get sumo wrestlers and from other countries, but yeah, I mean, they could have different weight classes. Yeah. <laughs> just put them up against the Greco-Roman wrestlers. Yeah. Cooking contests. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Chopped Olympics edition. They they just add, um, oh gosh, what what show is it where you have like a hundred questions? Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. No, not Jeopardy, no. but they they okay okay. There's like a hundred questions, and there's four options for each question. Oh, um, you can, sure like, not... call someone or phone a friend, you know, ask the the audience. Pretty sure that's Jeopardy, isn't it? No, Jeopardy is the... It's similar. There's a bunch of questions, but you can't, like, phone a friend or anything. Oh, uh, shoot. I'm pretty sure Price it's is... Price is right. Who wants to be a millionaire? Ooh, yeah, yeah. I think it's who wants to be a millionaire. What, what do you think, Lemon? What were you saying? Never mind. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, they, I was incorrect. But, you know, there's like the, the, one, the one clip, and it's like, who is the mascot of the Nintendo franchise Pokemon? And it's like Jigglypuff, Pikachu, and like two oh. other Pokemon names. Oh, yeah, that's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Okay, 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 yeah, that show. I mean, they could add that. Does that, does that add all the game shows? <laughs> Is that all the ones we know about? 
The Price is Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a fun addition to the Olympics, just game shows. Especially but, the Nickelodeon one. Uh, do you guys... The Nickelodeon one. Uh, do you guys remember the Whose Line Is It Anyways? Oh, yeah. I don't remember that. It was, it's like a stand-up comedy. So, like, who can do the that. best improv? Yeah. <laughs> they, oh, they what? Do that. oh, that'd be fun. Uh, what about Griff Ball, but in real life? <laughs> that'd be so dangerous. <laughs> What's Griff Ball? I don't entirely know. I know it's just on Halo. Like, okay. Hammer oh. can probably describe it. Well, how much detail do you want? <laughs> Uh, basics, I guess. Okay, so the sport it's is based off the characters from Red versus Blue. There's a character named Griff, and but the main the main gist of it is they have hammers or gravity hammers, um, that when you hit, it puts out like a shock wave and usually knocks people back and everything. And you have the swords from Halo. So in the middle, there's the bomb, and it's uh two teams of four and they're trying to get the bomb and run to the other side into that person's goal. If it gets to the goal, it explodes. So they probably can't do that. Um, (laughs) But in the game, you have the hammers and swords to kill each other or knock back each other to get it. But if you have the ball, you have an extra shielding. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's very chaotic. <laughs> like fun to watch. Yeah, it would be or, fun to watch. Or be in. But I mean, if you guys want uh, lemon, you can you can look up some competitions at Griff Ball. It, it does get pretty fun. <laughs> nice, I'll check it out. And we uh, do runs when we off. Like, see how many demons you can kill. Gosh, take it. <laughs> <laughs> the Americans with their oh. super shotguns just chaining or hook shotting across the map. <laughs> I it, it would be a good way to have fun and to clear out hell. <laughs> <laughs> the demons are like, go. oh no, it's the Americans. <laughs> it's the Olympics again, not again. <laughs> they designed the game. They designed the game. <laughs> and then the Germans just come in with flamethrowers. Flamethrowers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're having too much fun. Oh, no, I don't know. I'm I'm good. That's about everything I can think of. Yeah, I think I'm good. I'll probably think more. I'm like, ooh, oh, I got one. Programming. Who can program a code or work up a code fast enough? Oh, that would be wow. interesting. <laughs> In programming is so freaking languages. frustrating. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is frustrating. Okay, yeah. that's it for me. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. Well, with that being it for us, uh, Lemon, what do you have for us? Uh, I don't really have any. I don't have a topic today that deals with the Olympics, so we can skip me today. Oh, don't worry. It, it's not just Olympics today. Oh, yeah, it can be whatever. Mm, okay. Um, so I have two topics in mind. Well, I guess one, just one, because one I was thinking of is like, at what point is there? too much politics in your story slash medium or um, what do you guys think about visual novels? Um, I'm thinking of visual novels. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why I was thinking about the politics ones because I started this podcast and like I swear like the writing is really good but like I swear the writing must have been done by some of the like super crazy like woke Twitter liberal people like <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's a sci-fi story in the, f- set in the future and like it's just like so many little things that pop up and they're like oh my gosh this person must be like such she's they're really showing their politics through like there's one part where like they meet this alien person and they're like the alien person is like mocking humans for only thinking there's two genders oh jeez, and like the whole crew is like all women and like one man, but then the one man turns out to be trans. And it's like, what? And all the villains, I swear, all the villains seem to be like white guys. Uh, of course. 
and they go out of they go out of their way to like mention that they're white because it's a podcast you can't see it see them but like they always have to mention that they're white in there somewhere and it's like oh my gosh uh, okay. and the regime the regime they're fighting is like extremely like conservative like they're fighting this regime and this regime is against birth control and like there's apparently racist towards racist towards Asians and all that I'm just like oh my gosh you guys <laughs> wow Really, the uh, one part that really pissed me off was like they're uh, talking this this fictional universe up ahead, and like they talk about the English language and like oh yes, a bunch of a bunch of stupid white men in history history books or something like that. I'm just like, are you serious? Really? <laughs> this is supposed to be like hundreds of years in the future, and yet they're still like annoyed about like white people, you know? <laughs> still pissing and moaning about some thing from thousands of years ago. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, what are you guys going to say? Well, I, I want to talk. I actually want to talk about that a little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel that honestly is too much. And it would be bad even on the opposite spectrum. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, is that? Oh. Sorry, sorry. Um, really fast. My opinion is if you are trying to sway your readers into believing one thing and that's your goal of the story, then you should probably write something else. Because um, mm. I feel like that derives of the characters that you're making and the setting that you're putting. Um, like, if you want people to enjoy that, you can't just make it a one side thing because then you're just shunning potentially half your readers um you can't be insulting your readers right um i don't know i feel like if you're going to try to doing that you should be trying to show on both sides and then because there's this one book that my sister was reading and she was making it really good uh, the author made it really well because when you're reading one side it makes the other side bad but when you're reading in the other person's perspective the the supposed good guys are actually pretty bad in their own right and so it really makes you like who do i actually support because they both have really good points and also bad points and i think that actually is better writing for someone right yeah um for me i feel like if you're writing a story to express an idea or some concept or an experience, then it's okay. Like if, uh, if a woman struggled with a toxic workplace environment where she was mistreated because of her gender, then if she wrote a book about a young woman trying to make it in a world where she's mistreated because of her gender, then okay, you know, she's trying to get her experience across through the medium of storytelling. That's one of the reasons storytelling exists. If it's just a bunch of toxic, egotistical crap of, oh, I want to push this narrative that I think this group of people is bad, then it's like, well, you're just kind of spewing out a bunch of, I don't know, literary vomit into the void. You know, it's like, it doesn't change anyone's attitudes. It doesn't bring anybody new ideas. It's just you standing up and screaming for attention, you know, and no one's really interested in that. Yeah, yeah. The podcast I was mentioning is called "The Strange Case of Starship Iris." But anyways, I, I, I feel conflicted because like the writing is pretty good, and like there's moments where I'm actually generally intrigued and like impressed by like some of the stuff they say, like the stuff they put out. Because it's not all the time, but just these little moments here and there, I'm just like, really, I could really tell like the political leanings of the people who did this. But I don't know. I feel like if they want to create that, then sure they can create where they want and whatnot. But uh, part of me also feels like I don't really have to particularly agree with it, you know, just because it's yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's their right, it's their freedom and their right to write the story that they want and they can express how they want. But at the same time, they're like, I don't really have to like it either, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not necessarily hating on it just because, like, it's all female cast and, like, all that. It's just, I feel like it's very one sided and very, like, you could definitely tell, like, what their, um, uh, political leanings are through it and just like it just seemed like very like yeah it's not really trying to create discussion it's just like all oh, these people bad and this is like our 
this is how it's supposed to be. And I was just like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, They're not allowing for any discussion. Yeah, it's a very, like, one si- one way, one-sided one thing, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the bug like, the most too. It's like it's it's sci-fi. It's taking like place hundreds of years in the future, but yet you're, I don't know. You couldn't be more creative with it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. You go ahead, Mako. Um, there is a movie by Charlie Chaplin called The Dictator. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's a really good movie. And the whole point of it is like it's a comedy that kind of lampoons the Nazi Party. But then at the end, he makes this phenomenal speech about how we're all good and want to help each other about how we need to unite in the future, you know, free from tyrannical men. Like, it's really good. And the reason he made it was because this was before World War II and he wanted to bring attention to, you know, the light of the Jews in Nazi Germany. So, and he, if I remember right, he actually destroyed his career because of it, because uh, the public turned on him. They said he was warmongering. It was a very controversial movie, and so he ended up having to go back to the UK and make movies there because he just, you know, ruined his career in the US from it. Really? But it's like, yeah, no, it's it's an incredible movie. You really should watch it if you haven't. But um, that's an example of politics being done right. You know, he was trying to do some good with it. So, and <laughs> on the flip side, do you guys know? Uh, Starfire, the DC character. Yeah, is that the? I've seen thumbnails of it. Is it that like um, slightly chubby gothic girl? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I just so heard about. about yeah, I just heard about that because a lot of people what? made. Oh, you you have to see it. it's incredible. I thought it was some bad fan flash art animation, but it's an actual comic. <laughs> but like, um, so Starfire marries Dick Grayson. You know, one the first Robin. Yeah. So, and a lot of people will write kind of fanfics about their kid. A lot of it's really cute. And I, th- I think there actually was, they did have a daughter canonically somewhere. Oh, goodness. Okay. But recent. Oh, yeah. Did <laughs> but, you look uh, it up? Yeah, I just looked it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but recently, some DC writer decided to. I don't know if it's like a different universe or retcon, whatever it is, but. Yeah, instead they have a daughter who's overweight and emo and all this other stuff, and it's about her and the disconnect between her and her mother. Because, you know, Starfire is really bubbly and bright and optimistic and happy and beautiful. So, a lot of the backlash against it has been sort of like, we get what you're trying to do here, but it's just so dumb and even kind of disrespectful (laughs) to the characters. (laughs) That none of us want this, you know. None of us want to read it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I get what you're trying to do here, but it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the issue is here is they they looked at Starfire and thought, let's do every single little thing opposite of Starfire. Yeah. But in reality, it's just like, well, obviously you're not going to be Starfire. You're half human. Uh, she has naturally orange fire hair, orange skin. It's like, of course you're not going to be Starfire. You don't have to literally do a hundred flip side opposite to get the point out there. Um, so like her mom was straight. She is lesbian apparently or ex- experimental. Um, yeah. She was bubbly, fiery hair, orange, blonde, red head. You know, black hair. It's like they're literally kind of just checking off things. She's wearing white boots. She's wearing black boots. It's like you easily could have written the story um, more appealing looking, I guess. Yeah. Unlike uh, a few years ago, they introduced Batman's son, Damian Wayne. Uh huh. And like, a lot of his earlier stories about the disconnect between him and his father, you know, but the thing is he grows. Like, I think now he's become a much more popular character because he connected with his dad and kind of simmered down. He was like an arrogant punk when he first showed up. But it's like, he's not a complete opposite of Batman. He just had a really messed up childhood, had a lot of issues and, 
you know, they ended up working through them. So, but just creating a character who's a polar opposite of, you know, Starfire and then creating a conflict based off that, it just, yeah, like I said, it just kind of feels like they're taking off boxes. Yeah. Which they probably were. It's, yeah. Because it's Starfire's and whose child? Dick Grayson. Yeah, like, even just a mixture of them, you know, like how a child normally is, would be a very complex, uh, you know, raising up story for that child. Because uh, I'm pretty sure the way that Dick Grayson grew up is totally different than the way Starfire grew up. Yeah. You know, they and probably I'm... wouldn't have agreed with each other back then, but... He's only 5'10". Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think she is taller than him, actually. Yeah. Which is funny. But, I mean, yeah, and, like, some people are pointing out, this, I can't see them being bad parents, because Dick Grayson did have, apparently, great parents until they died. And Starfire's one of the warmest, kindest people in DC. <laughs> so the idea of them just being bad parents is kind of out there, really. Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff where I feel like they only half read how the stories were written. <laughs> like um, He-Man? Yeah, or just kind of nitpicking <laughs> parts that they don't want to include, where in reality, if they compare to the story that they're writing to a lot of the comics that have already been written, they probably would have found similarities or things that just wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Well, I guess... Yeah, okay. That, that was for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it for me. One last thing I want to rant about, um, and that podcast I was telling you about, another thing that really annoyed me, so, like, they're, this uh, spaceship uh, with a bunch of, like, rad tag outlaws or whatever, they have this alien pilot, and she's trying to reprogram, like, the main computer to, like, do something, and she's trying to, like, make it recognize her name. But it doesn't recognize her name because it's not, it's like programmed in English. It doesn't recognize her name as because it's her name's a foreign name. Okay. And like the character was just having such a fit about it. Like she is freaking out, being like, it doesn't recognize my name. It's, I'm so offended. It's racist against me. And like, um, what? Was, yeah, it's just annoying me because, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, okay. Has, has anyone used Word before? My name, my last name, which I'm not going to say, <laughs> has <laughs> never been recognized by Word ever my entire life. I don't sue Microsoft for it. Like, sorry that they don't know every single last name in the language. Right. <laughs> yeah. And like with the amount of names and languages that are in the world, it's there's actually a really big chunk of it that you're not going to find. Yeah. I I would be surprised if 25% of the names in the world were recognized by Google Word or Google itself or Word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, uh, just, that part just like irked me. I'm just like, what, how much of a snowflake are you? Like, seriously, like, if I go to a computer, does it doesn't recognize my name? Like, big whoop, like, it doesn't recognize my name, but yet you have to throw this whole tantrum being like, it's racist against me. My name's a real word, but yeah, I doesn't recognize it. And it's like, oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> uh, gosh. Uh, I mean, my sister is kind of an unusual name, and we could never, you know, you, f you find those little, like, knickknacks with your names on it, license plates or whatever. Like gift drops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can find her name. I could always find mine, but... It's like, that doesn't mean, no, your name doesn't exist. Oh, you suck or anything like that. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's this kind of, you know, luck, statistics, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're just going to put out the most common ones that sell. I'm sorry. But yeah, exactly. You, like Adam You can't do custom ones. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to the people who like this podcast or if the writers or creators here is talking about it. It's all good, but I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's, oh my gosh, it just finds so silly. There's like this is a group of like smugglers, like hardened like smuggler people who like grew up grew up out of regimes and all that, but they're getting all offended because some foreign 
language does it recognize a name? It's just like, are you serious? Oh, wow. So. Right. Kind of an oxymoron if you think about it, but I mean, that's not the definition of oxymoron. It just feels like it fits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's an oxymoron. And speaking of morons, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, all right. Well, I guess we talked about that instead of visual novels. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would that for another one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, do you want, not right now, maybe, but are you going to want to talk about like webcomic visual novels? Or are you going to talk about like dating sim visual novels? Oh, I didn't think about oh, that. Those are totally different things. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what do you mean by webcomic visual novels, like a video game you buy that's like a visual novel or? Or even like webtoons? Um, well, I, I guess. Uh, well, what do you mean by a visual novel then? Let me hear your definition. Like a video game, but it's like a, it's more of a story, I guess, where you just choose your own, choose the events that happen in the story. Oh. Yeah, okay, okay. Kind of like Telltale. Yeah. Okay, then then my then my definition is different, so I won't I won't go with that. Were you thinking of like visual novels or or not visual novels? I mean, dating sims. Well, dating sims I feel like would count as a visual novel. Okay, yeah, more vis- more dating sims, I guess, because I was actually looking at one. And I'm like, huh, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Yeah, because I mean, there was the the one that was really popular for a while, the the father one. Um, oh, Dream Daddy. Yeah, this, this, <laughs> um, and then there's like a pigeon dating sim. Um, really, is a pigeon one? If I remember it, yeah. Or at least a bird one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess this is really news for Mako here. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, there's all the classic ones. I mean... Hey, Doki Doki Ledger oh. Club counts as a visual novel, right? Yeah, Doki Doki. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I apologize to all Fate fans, but if I remember right, it started off as visual novels and then actually became an anime after that which is why fate is so chaotic because <laughs> there's so many different options in lines. visual novels plus a gotcha game yeah yeah i mean i'm basing this off what giguk has said <laughs> recognize us giguk senpai okay <laughs> <laughs> notice us <laughs> notice my <laughs> oh yeah okay you bring in markiplier but <laughs> Uh, I mean, any listeners out there, I was heavily influenced by Trash Taste, and Lemon knows them now as well, so <laughs> I, I feel like I gave that vibe of them, especially in the earlier episodes, but... Yeah. So you want to say that for later, then? Yeah, we can say that for later. How long have we been going so far? Good a while. Good a while. Okay. Yeah, we can end it here, oh. then. Yeah, Unless real quick. the host has anything. Uh, real quick. Uh, I remember when I actually found a dating sim. We wanted to, we wanted to buy it for Hammer. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, one. yes. The dating sim on the Switch, right? Yeah, it was like, beautiful ninja girl comes down from the mountains to be your roommate. <laughs> like, we need to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we should invite uh, Bull Shark to talk to us about dating sims. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure he has a strong opinion about that. Oh yeah, he would have a strong opinion about. That. I don't think it would go with him. All right, well, <laughs> let's let's plan for that for one of the topics, and um, let's do some research on different ones. Not play them. Uh, I mean, if you guys want to look up stuff about them, but let's let's try to find one that piques your interest, and we can talk about them. A day in sim or a visual novel? Both. Both. Well, yeah, I mean, mine would probably be about a dating sim, but if you have a specific visual <laughs> novel or like a yeah, Telltale got, game, that would be fine. I've got a couple in mind on my radar, okay. so I could check it out. <laughs> Sweet. All right. <laughs> okay. I, well, yeah. yeah, I think that's all the topics we have. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you again, hopefully, next week. Yeah, if you guys have any things you guys want us to talk about, feel free to comment them down so we don't have to think about them all the time. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.